And the award goes to Polymerase Chain Reaction. In 2013, I journeyed to the world-famous Yellowstone Park in the Midwestern United States, and I collected this footage of the famous Old Faithful. Welcome again. In 1969, two biologists researching in the hot springs of Yellowstone Park came across a very unique type of bacterium. It was able to thrive in the hot temperatures and its optimum was between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. It was this groundbreaking discovery in 1969 when they found the bacterium Thermus aquaticus that would revolutionize molecular biology in the late 20th century and now into the 21st century. In the 1950s, Watson and Crick used a model very much like this to elucidate the structure of DNA. And explanations of the replication of DNA soon followed. In living organisms, when DNA is replicated, it must first unwind from its double helix structure. This happens with the aid of the enzyme helicase, which takes apart the double helix. And then another enzyme, DNA polymerase, begins to work with primers to build two complementary strands, and in this way DNA is replicated. Like so many other things in the history of science, it was this discovery of Brock and Hudson in 1969 that paved the way for the groundbreaking work of Carrie Mullis in 1983. Because of an enzyme, today known as TAC polymerase, which was extracted from Thermus aquaticus. It was because of this enzyme that Mullis was able to design this protocol for the replication of DNA outside of a living system and at a temperature that would allow the replication process to proceed much more rapidly than it would in a biological system. All of this was made possible because there was an enzyme, TAC polymerase, that had an optimum temperature of between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. Mullis would go on to receive a Nobel Prize in 1993 for his groundbreaking work. And it was his work that opened up so many other areas of molecular biology, like DNA sequencing. And it was his work that was instrumental in the Human Genome Project and the polymerase chain reaction continues to be an important tool in all aspects of DNA sequencing and 21st century bioinformatics. To properly understand the workings of the PCR reaction, I recommend that you go to learngenetics.utah.edu and work with the excellent virtual lab. But as you work with that virtual lab, I would like you to pay attention to the following points. Recall that DNA is made up of two nucleic acid chains wound together in a double helix, but each of these chains run anti-parallel, meaning that one chain runs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, and the complementary chain runs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. In polymerase chain reaction, the first step involves a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the DNA is denatured. The hydrogen bonds that hold the chains together are broken. It doesn't take very long, just about 15 seconds, for this denaturation cycle. The mixture is cooled to 54 degrees Celsius. Included in that mix would be primers and nucleotides and of course the enzyme TAC polymerase. At this temperature of 54 the strands of the double helix would have a tendency to rejoin or to anneal but if primers are added and the concentration of the primers is significant enough then the primers prevent the annealing of the DNA strands and once the primers are in place, 
and the temperature is raised to 72 degrees Celsius, the optimum for tack polymerase, then it begins to go to work and to quickly assemble the part of the DNA molecule that you desire to have copied. Here I have used these three magnets to symbolize the TAC polymerase, which is a complex protein structure. But it would be ideal if you looked at this using molecular visualization software. Let's have a look. And now if you go to learngenetics.utah.edu and you interact with the virtual lab, you will get a complete understanding of how the cycle of the polymerase chain reaction occurs.